Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn how to take images with the Tikni Spirit microscope. So let's start. So now we are ready to actually load a sample into the microscope and for which we need to remove the room temperature holder that on the on the microscope. And we remove the holder by pulling it outside towards us. At this point it is pretty much controlled by the vacuum from the column and you need to get a nice hold of it so that it doesn't slip from your hands and then just bangs into the compute stage. Then you can gently turn the holder in the clockwise direction where it will get locked and you can release the holder as there's a pin on the holder that can take control of the, the room temperature holder. Then we go back to the uh, Technoiser interface and then we check for the vacuum values for the gun and the column section and the value still should be in the green if you have pulled the column in the in the right manner and then you are ready to remove the the room temperature holder from the from the compute stage next we place the holder into the sample loading tool and it is important to remember that we never touch the room temperature holder below the below the black o-ring as it can introduce dirt into the column and affect the vacuum in the in the microscope now what we are doing here is is loading a grid onto this room temperature holder with using the sample loading tool which is the pointy thing with the wood in the video now what we do is use one hand to hold back the end of the holder to prevent the holder from slipping out of the station and insert the pin into the pinhole in the grid clamp and gently raise the clamp straight up until it stops. Then using one of these fine tweezers we pick up a grid from the grid box and place the grid into the, the recess at the end of the holder and make sure that the grid and the bottom hole are align concentrically with each other then we lower the clamp with the loading pin to make sure to lock the grid and turn the uh, room temperature holder upside down to make sure that the grid doesn't fall onto the uh, working station at this point we have checked that everything on the microscope is working okay and now we are ready to load our grid into the microscope for imaging so the first thing that we need to do is, is look at this Tecna user interface, which basically has a lot of controls for the microscope. So let's start with the uh, columns on the left hand side. So the first box that we see here on the left hand side of the screen, which with a label of status column walls, it tells you how the vacuum at each stage in the microscope, say gun, uh, the whole column, the camera, uh, etc., are doing, and if any of those values are not in green, at least the first two, then the microscope is is not okay for for operation. Then the second box that you see right below it is for the high tension tank, and so the high tension tank button should be in yellow and it should read 120 kilovolts. Then the last thing below it is the control for the filament. Uh, so the filament button should also be in yellow so that uh, it can start emitting electrons. At this point we are ready to load the grid in the microscope and for which we carefully find the right orientation of the room temperature holder pin so that it can slide into the goniometer without any obstruction. And as soon as you do it, the red light on the compute stage will, will go on. And the user interface will ask you to select what type of specimen holder are you inserting into the microscope. And as soon as you click enter with the single tilt or the room temperature holder that I'm referring to in this video, it will kick off a timer on the vacuum overview which is the window that you see on the right hand side of your uh, of the screen and we have to wait until the timer goes off and at this point on the goniometer the red light will also go off so then you can rotate the 
room temperature holder in the counterclockwise position at which point it, the vacuum inside the column will make it easy for you to place the holder into the compute stage very gently and now you have to look back again onto the Tecna user interface to and check the uh, va vacuum values for the gun column they will be a bit high around 13 12 or 14 depending on how gently you put the column into the compute stage and it will eventually drop to 6 at this stage we are ready to look at our grid now for which we need to open a program called as digital micrograph because it has the control for our camera on the microscope and it's also a important component of communication between another program known as CDLEM for which we will be using to take the images from the grid. Now we need to open the column walls on the microscope and take a look if the we can see the electron beam. Since we see the, the fluorescent green color on the visualization screen there, we are now ready to look at the grid for which we will be using the program called as Serial EM. And the first thing we need to do is to take a montage of a grid, which basically is an atlas of how the overall grid looks like. The first step for this is that we need to set up the magnif right magnification on the microscope, which in our case is going to be 100x. At this magnification, we can completely see the grid from one end to the other. The next thing that we need to do here is put on the right objective on the microscope so that next we go to the serial EM software and under the navigator tab and the montaging and grids, there's an option to click call as set up full montage and we will and we will set up the program to build a map which is made up of uh, 5 times 5 which is 25 pictures that will span our whole grid. We usually use the, we typically use an MRC file format to save the atlas. Um, it's a very common format uh, to you save your micrographs uh, in, in normal EM or cryo EM. As soon as you click start on the for for the montage you can see that the stage is now going to move around taking images of uh, each section and stitching up 25 images to build a overview of the grid that we have in this microscope right now now what you're doing is is going around a grid and as you can see that there are many areas where you have uh, the support carbon layer that is broken and the carbon and there are areas where the carbon layer is intact. So we want to take an image on where you have the, the carbon. So we select a few areas like this and, and using the navigator option on the other screen which is part of the serial EM, we can save the areas of our interest so that we can go to each of them and and take a look at the protein that we negatively stained for this uh, grid. Now that we have our area of interest, the next thing that we are going to do is go to the imaging states of the serial EM software and then scroll down to uh, a magnification that is preset up. You can also do this manually using the uh, control bolts that are on the microscope. But the beauty of this program is that you can uh, save the the uh, image imaging condition settings, and then you can quickly go back to the settings whenever you whenever you come next time for imaging. Now that we have the right magnification and setup, we are ready to go to the area of interest, which is in this case the position 3 that we saved. And using the go to XY button on the navigator, we will 
ask the software to take us to to the coordinates that are highlighted here in blue before we take a view image it is very important to set up the viewing parameters and at this point we would like to set the image acquisition in a single image mode and not in the continuous mode the difference in between both of them is that one is going to give you a still image and the other one is going to give you a live view of what is happening on the that in that position so we can now click ok and then press the view button on the camera and script section of the Serlium software on the right hand side this basically gives us an image of the position that we were interested in so one of the reasons why this image is blurry is because the sample the specimen is not in the focus with the objective lens meaning that that you need to adjust the height of the specimen on the goniometer so that at whatever tilt angle you take an image you should be able to find your object of interest in the focus giving you the right contrast or right features and as you can see that the wobbler in the goniometer will try to adjust the height by tilting the stage to plus 15 degrees and minus 15 degrees from the original position until the image that we see doesn't move for whatever tilt angle that we are using it is also possible to set the z height or the eucentric height using the control panel for the microscope so in our case we're using a software to do this but it can also be done manually the other reason that the image that we saw was blurry is because it doesn't have the right defocus so we are not at all getting any kind of right information in terms of the uh, spatial frequencies from this image at a very wrong defocus we are going to an area where we can find a protein with the help of the joystick on the control panel and we can take a view image as expected these amyloid fibers that we see here are out of focus we only see few black streaks but nothing beyond that so now we go back to the control panel and then using the focus knob keep changing the focus until we can see the right uh, features from 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 the Im from the continuous image that we are seeing here you can also refer to the uh, the small window that is on the right hand side those are basically thorn rings that you don't see clearly right now because the image is not in focus but as you keep on changing the focus there will be concentric rings that will appear into that area and as soon as you get an image with a good uh, information you can also correlate it with the thorn rings the more thorn rings you see the better image you can 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 have for visualization we can then go to another area of interest where we can find another bunch of amyloid fibers and repeat the same process where you always fix the z height or the eucentric height first and then you uh, determine at what focus we are and then keep on changing the focus until you get the right features from your object or protein of interest once you're done you can remove the room temperature holder from the microscope and using the loading pin you can raise the clamp and then turn the holder upside down so that the grid can drop onto the working station which you can then put back into the grid box and then place the room temperature holder into the microscope again once you're done imaging and you determine that you don't want to continue with the session anymore it is very important to retract the camera from the system and you can go back to the digital micrograph and under the camera click retract settings you can hear the sound for camera retraction and that's how you can be sure that the camera is no longer connected to the microscope We hope that you were able to understand that how data collection with the spirit microscope on a negative stain grid usually works. Uh, don't worry about the staining part. 
it's going to be covered in one of the labs as a special uh, technique and uh, please note down any questions that you have uh, or anything or that you didn't understand in the video or anything that wasn't clearly said or mentioned or anything that you think we missed and we will be happy to cover your doubts in the lab session thank you very much everyone